Hi, welcome to the world today with Brian Stiegel. So what I'm doing right now is going to be just a little bit different. Um, so when I had been recording my podcast the last two days, um, and usually I just record it all in one day, and what happened these past two days is that uh, the first day my mind just wasn't right, and I I couldn't think clearly I had too much self-doubt really so like a, a positive you know my train of thought would be going and then a, a negative thought would kind of interject and then I couldn't couldn't stop myself from uh you know falling victim to to that train of thought and so I stopped the podcast a, two or three times the first day that I did it no one was going to try to do it edit it together be fine um ended up doing the majority of the podcast yesterday, but during the part that I did yesterday, I had referred to a little bit in the first failed part, and so uh, what I would, what I think I'm going to try to do or decide to try to do is uh, keep them in there, and I had debated, should I keep them in there, should I not, but, you know, since the theme of this podcast is honesty, and I desperately want to stay true to that. Um, I figured I'm just going to keep in the part that is unflattering, the part that I do terribly in that I kind of, you know, it, I was doing a solo for the camera, right? And I bombed in front of nobody, in front of one camera and myself, and I bombed, you know, like I couldn't even, couldn't focus, I couldn't get the words out. I, so that was weird, but but I, I think I'm going to keep that in. And so this will be a test in editing all these together, seeing if I can keep that in. This this little short clip here is to preface it. This will be no longer than three minutes or so, and then get into that first part of the podcast. And I'll keep it in order since uh, during, like I said, the second part, I do reference some of the stuff from the previous day. So, you know, uh, what you're going to see then here is about 20 to 25 minutes of me kind of not knowing where I'm going and just you can really hear and see all the the self-doubt and the I mean you can almost see when like a negative thought pops in my head because I'll just talk 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 then and you know and off so you know we'll see what happens but stick with me uh if you want to skip it just skip it you know um I guess just fine where I cut back in and it looks a little different. I don't know. But thanks for checking it out, guys. Um, you know, like, subscribe, do all that uh, shit. But we'll see uh, See if this works. Thanks for bearing with me in this uh, experiment. And yeah, I figured why only show the good parts? Got to show the failures too because I am not perfect. I'm mostly a failure actually. So I'll try that. So... Check it out, guys. Hi, welcome to the world today with Brian Stiegel. Today, we've got some peopling of the Americas, because I forgot that last week. Maybe a little bit of notes on religion and uh, making sense of things. Mm, Cheech and Chong and, and something that I learned from Tommy Chong here. Uh... Accents. We may touch on some accents. Progress. And then new technology. And I guess maybe I'll hit on something that happened at work last week too. Uh, that was interesting. So, you know, I'll just uh, start with a quick update for all of you. So, man, I did I, hmm. I don't even know where to begin here. I would like to I would like to uh get a better camera so that I can be seen better. Um I'd like to uh just have another option so instead of looking here maybe I can look up there or down there and you guys will see me and I'd like to be able to switch back and forth between that uh, so what I'd like to do in theory is use my phone 
what I would like to do would be use my phone and somehow be able to like get the camera information onto my computer use the camera from my computer now that's possible uh, with this droid cam thing I found and I sh I, I can do it uh, over Wi-Fi as it is now it's not it's just a little laggy and I if I did it like that I don't think it would add anything to this show so an another option well I'm gonna find out how the the cabling works so I can have it transmit the data over the cable so it doesn't lag what else I thought about doing is like starting both the recordings at the same time and then trying to sync them together later and cutting back and forth but that would be a ton of work and I can't spend that much time doing this I mean that would take hours of editing and I can't do that um, even you know the small amount of time I put into it now is is you know a time sink in a way um, but speaking you know of that so so I'd like to uh, get another camera here maybe so I can look at a couple places whilst talking to you guys um, then again you know I also kinda thought maybe it's uh, not all that important considering you know the lack of viewership and so what does that matter so much? Maybe instead I should focus on getting new content um, or content worthy of being viewed. Um, you know, because I do understand it. it's an extremely competitive market and, you know, my stuff's not perfect quality, you know, or great or good quality even. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I kind of thought about that too because the progress on this is it's slower than I would have thought not that I thought it was gonna be quick or anything but um, you know here I am at you know episode 24 on this 23rd of July by the way I did not mention that um, and you know we're getting there got nine subscribers and that's pretty cool um, you know, and, and most of those, all of those people are probably people I know. Um, and, and uh, you know, one thing that I, I kind of noticed, and, you know, sorry for starting this off super down. Uh, if I had a joke, I would tell it to you, but I don't, so I guess we'll keep going. But, uh... Yeah, you know, I realized that if just one person had watched an episode of, like, any of my episodes, that it would be in, uh, because YouTube shows the top five, so, you know, I can see the top five videos watched the past 28 days, month, so I'm looking at that, and I realize if anyone want, and it's all, um, the insert name here, Gaming Podcast, I do with Glenn, and that is, uh, you know, because I'll pull it up while we're doing it. He'll pull it up while he's doing it. And then you know, people might check it out now and then. So those, by default, get like a, a couple, like two or three hundred minutes of like watch time. Just from it being up on mine, it being up on his. And uh, I think YouTube counts when I view it, even though I'm just checking to make sure, you know, everything's groovy with, uh, with the audio and everything. But... Yeah, I realized one person watching one full video would make it into that top five. And then, you know, then that was kind of like, you know, if I'm I'm making these and, and it's not getting any views and the watch time isn't even, hasn't even been watched once the whole way through. Like, cumulatively, everyone who's watched it hasn't even added up to the minutes of the video. You know, I'd be like a hundred minutes or so and not quite around there so that's it's just interesting really um, you know and it's it's growing slow I'd, I'd like to think that it's growing although yeah I could be deluding myself it could not be growing so much as it is you know festering and then eventually maybe it'll die or something but 
I don't know, I kind of, you know, I'm not, you know, thought about, like, you know, I could stop doing it, focus on other things, and then I kind of thought, like, well, what else would I do? You know, like, I just go to work, work out, eat, shower, gym, you know, that's the shit I do. I don't do much else, so I do this, and it's really fun, and I enjoy it, so... You know, and because I enjoy it, I don't think it matters too much how many people are watching it. Um, I just think it'd be cool, and I'm excited uh, for the point when when people do start watching a little more. Um, but, you know, maybe we'll move on to something like fun. Because uh, that was like a terrible way to start a podcast, by the way. That's another thing that's hard. You know, I haven't gotten much or uh, really almost any feedback because uh, these aren't being watched. So, like, for all I know, I mean, I, I know because I'll, I'll check through. But, you know, for all I know, there could be, like, a, an image of a pirate with a big swinging dick just, you know, running through the middle of my videos. And, and I wouldn't know and, and people wouldn't know, I guess. But, I don't know, shit's, uh, interesting, I guess, and I got all this shit written down, and hardly anything to say, but yeah, that's just, uh, the progress that's been made here, and it's slow, but I hope that it's going, and I hope it grows, and, and, uh, I thought this, too, that, uh, maybe, you know, maybe I should, because I see things and think, man, that's so easy, I could do that, and there's a little bit of narcissism to that because maybe I think, oh, I can do anything. I'm so great, yada, yada. And it's not really that so much as it's like, well, maybe it is partly that, but also partly because shit's just really easy. So, you know, I'll see people do like how-to videos or let's plays or guides or like, you know, short skits or Really, there's so much that people can do in the clips that get a ton of uh, interest and attention and views and stuff. And it's, man, I could have done some of that. You know, I could make a how-to video, like, you know, how, uh, I don't know, how to make an unsuccessful podcast, episode one. Don't put any work into it. And, you know, it's kind of like the, the videos I'd probably make, though. But, uh, yeah, you know, I can make, like, a how-to, like, how to play this game, how to do this in this game, how to, you know, yada yada. And I think that would be easy. Maybe, uh, maybe I, w what if I did it and didn't even get popular at that, though? Then that might make me feel pretty bad. Then again, those are hard, and they do take some some level of skill. And but I could have like gotten the editing skills necessary, or you know, I could have gotten all the skills necessary to do some of that stuff. Um, and just just never did. You know, I could do a let's play. I could do a how to. I can do, you know. And then, I guess it kind of makes me a bit of an asshole for, like, looking at that content and thinking, oh, I could do that, that would be so easy. And then, you know, really probably a whole lot more goes into it, you know, that I'm not even aware of. So, you know, that's just me talking out of my ass what I could and couldn't do, but, uh, you know, the podcasting is, it's challenging, and I don't mind that it's challenging, um... You know, I'd like to get better, but, and again, I can't spend a ridiculous amount of time on these every week either, although, you know, I have fun and I'd like to, so, some days I wonder, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll stop doing this at some point, but, you know, I'll do it until I stop having fun with it, which is probably going to, you know, it's probably going to be a long time, you know, I'm still having fun with it, so, and now... I'm uh, going to wipe this little thingy phone so I can get get it back in its case because I get super paranoid when it's not in its case. 
So, but you know, so what else? Uh, what else do we got? I got some um, gym updates just to tell you guys. Um, and I think I'll probably stop doing these, maybe eventually, because. And, and that, again, too, is the thing about not having feedback is that I don't really know what people like and what people don't like. You know, I you know I could just do a whole show of Woody's. Maybe people like that. Oh, oh, maybe they don't. Maybe they like you know. And I'm sure no one does, but you know maybe they like a political opinion once in a while. Maybe they like this or that. And it's you know, one day I'll get feedback. One day I'll be able to improve this thing. Um, and there's still so much I can do for now to improve it. I guess so. I don't even really know what I'm talking about. But. No, no, no that I bullshit and wasted around, you know, 20 minutes, uh, we can, uh, talk about some other shit, and I guess, this, sh this is just uh, done poorly, I can't even tell what I'm looking at here, really, but, uh, new technology, uh, 4K. Yeah, I'd like to do a podcast that has some 4K in it, you know, with my phone or something, and, um, man, I am just going off in my head here, I can't, I can't focus, you know, and I'm thinking, well, I should probably end this and start it again, because it's not exciting, and it's not fun, and, then again, I don't think I have much that's fun or exciting for this week anyway, so I don't know what I would talk about, you know, other than this stuff. Um, I don't know, man, it's... Uh, and then I could cut all this out and recut it, that'd be so much work, and not that I don't want to put the work... I've already wasted so much time today, it's already 1 o'clock in the afternoon... Um, I wanted to get this started around 11 or noon, and here's the thing, I could have actually started this at 12 today, I could have, but I sat here trying to figure out how to get other video on it, you know, with my phone, and then fucked around with that, even though I don't need to, because the video is the least important part of this, because nobody watches this, so why didn't I spend 40 minutes trying to get that to work, when nobody watches anyway, and it's... You know, I should have just focused on having good content, or maybe a good, like, a uh, joke to come out on, or like a bit or something, to keep people interested, and keep their attention. Instead, I just waste time, doing all this other shit, doing stupid shit, and, uh, you know, I don't even know, I don't even got fucking shit to talk about this week, you know, and now my, my mind is, like, trapped on not getting that to work, and you know, improving the podcast, and then it's pointlessness, because, again, you know, no views and shit like that, and not, not to complain, and this is weird, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't done this, just sat here and, like, shat on myself, um, and how bad I am at this, and how bad, you know, that everything's going, and I try to put it in a positive light, and say that we're making progress, and say that we're moving forward, we're getting more people, you know, we're 24 episodes in, and we might have our first regular viewer, you know, like, it's, um, I don't know, I guess I just won't think about it too much, because what else can you do, you know, I mean, I can't really just sit there and, and focus on it, so I either got to keep doing it, or, or, or not do it anymore, I guess. Oh, man. Uh, I feel like I need a reset, man. Like a, a hard reset for my brain. Um, and I don't know. I don't know what that hard reset would be. Uh, but I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to keep it going. I'll talk about some other shit. I'll move on to... Um, Fitness and health. Health and fitness. Yay. Um, and again, this is another thing. I don't know if anybody gives a shit about this or if, or if they're like, hey, just stop talking about that. And it's, 
you know, and I'm making the podcast, so I guess, and again, I talk about what I want to talk about, but I don't know, man, I need to, I need to, I don't know, my, my mind is not, it's not running right, um, yeah, what kind of new technology am I excited for, I don't know, I was looking, and, you know, they used to, have uh fuck I don't even know where I'm going right now man uh I guess yeah with the health stuff maybe no one likes it nobody cares about it nobody wants to hear it oh it sounds like you're bragging bro I'm not I mean what what's what's even the point um I don't know it motivates me makes me happy so I'm I'm, I'm glad I do it and uh I could restart now and, and I have just wasted 20 minutes of my time because what if somebody does watch and and then you just get this impression that it's just me sitting here rambling 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 and I don't have anything to talk about oh my god um I don't know how I'm gonna stop and and get this like going on the right track again unless I just keep going but <sighs> fitness stuff um Yay, I hit 245 on the bench like two weeks ago, that was pretty cool, and uh, 225 was my goal, you know, a few months ago, finally hit that, hit 245 now, that's nifty, moving up, getting stronger, and, you know, just uh, makes me happy that I'm getting stronger. Hmm. Like my brain just short circuited or something happened with my computer, but either way, you know, what am I doing? God damn it. Hi, welcome back to the world today. It is, uh, July 23rd here, and, uh, again, that's back. Welcome back. I was recording and uh took a break because you know i'm a confused individual um and i you know we'll see how i cope now um but keep going so the health and fitness i don't know if i'm going to keep talking about that so much um for different reasons one, I guess, I mean, it's not like my main lane, so maybe just don't talk about it at all. Maybe it'll alienate people, maybe. Although maybe, maybe people relate with trying to get into shape and not, but not being like a world-class athlete with it. You know, I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I'd hit 245 on the bench, I'd mentioned, and, and I'm gonna, you know... I also want to hit on talking about gym etiquette because there are people at the gym and the things they do don't make any sense to me. And, uh, but yeah, I hit 245 on that bench, so that's pretty cool because I, I hit 240 or 225. Um, I wanted to do it, I think before the end of March or before the end of April, something like that, and I uh, was not able to, but I did it shortly thereafter, and now just ended up hitting 245 as well, just trying to move up, and probably going to keep trying to move up, uh, although I think it's finally time to finish slimming all the way down and, and cut off the rest of the, uh, the weight because I'm still a bit uh, chubby and and could stand to lose some weight so uh, I think I'm gonna start doing that again so I'll try to maintain all my lifts although most times when I cut I manage to get stronger and cut but probably not as quickly but yet yeah, so uh, Anyway, I think I may stop talking about the health and fitness stuff because it's not, like, totally my lane, so why talk about it at all? Other people can, can do it a lot better, although, 
you know, I'll probably still do it. I just gotta, I gotta get my head right and I don't know. I don't know what's up. Um, what else today? Oh, yeah, that's right. The gym etiquette. Well, oh my gosh. There are some people at the gym. And I don't even think I should talk about this because I, I, I think I have poor gym etiquette probably. I'm not very good at uh, being around people all the time. But there's this dude and every single time. Well, it was like every day it always seemed like he was doing the same things like the bike. And he, w he would have to move one of the bikes into the back room so he could do his cardio in there with all the other shit that he was doing because I guess that was one of his many stations that he was doing I, I don't know uh, but he seems to do something similar every day which is that and then just getting weight around and throwing it or so he'll he'll like clean it or hang clean it you know he'll get it get it up here be looking groovy and then he'll just bruh, and let go and just fuck throw it off and it goes oh my god it's so loud and clunk, clunk, clunk. you know and it's got he's got the rubber ones on it or whatever you know the rubber weights the floors wood it's on a little rubber mat I guess and it's you know could be worse but for starters he's almost hit someone a couple times there was this time this dude was fucking and this dude's in there working hard all the time and he's in there like you know doing finishing up his workout I think and this dude's throwing the way up throwing it off and it nearly hits this dude right in the face uh, it nearly crushed him while he was finishing his workout. So, and I saw his eyes. He was like, Wah! and was like terrified, kind of. Well, I guess for a moment he was terrified. And then he kind of looked at him like, what the fuck are you doing that right here for? And then I think he got up and moved. Or maybe he finished his thing and then moved. I don't know. I don't want to finish the story wrong but yeah that dude uh dude throwing the weights around it's completely unnecessary and look if you do all the work to get it up there i mean for sort of part of this set is like getting it down without hurting yourself or the rep i guess but like don't just drop it from here don't just throw it forward and and let go and just let it like bounce and, uh, on the second bounce it's still bouncing like a foot or more into the air like it's I don't understand why this dude can't just set the weight down as he's finished you know like or try to like uh, I don't know I look like an idiot up here moving around you know but um what the hell is that dude doing, man? Almost crushed a dude. He hasn't been there in the last few days, I've noticed. But, you know, maybe he found another gym or is going at a different time. I go at, like, the same times, so. Mm. But, yeah. Might stop talking about that after I talked about it for seven more minutes, but... Hmm, you know, what else we got today? Um, some people were re uh, applying logic and reason to religion. And I guess, well, it's, it's going to make me sound like an asshole saying it like that, I guess I shouldn't. I guess the way I should phrase it. I don't know, it doesn't make so much sense to me when people 
try to like make sense of religion and and go about it like in a reasoned way as though the stories were literal you know when, when they when they take it like literally and and um kind of try to reason it out i notice that uh they don't Uh, I lost my train of thought. All right, I'm back again. All right, so with the religion, I was uh, listening to some people, and they said they were kind of, you know, do you believe it's true? Oh, I don't know. Do you believe it's true? You know, going back and forth. And one of the people said like do you really believe you know that Jesus died you know as the son of God or do you really think he did the miracles or something along those lines and they said well of course you know why start a religion for someone who didn't die and then the thing was that he rose from the dead three days later you know so I was like why would they start a religion for someone who didn't rise from the dead and that's just uh that is a kind of fallacy although in preparation i should have looked up which kind of fallacy it is uh but i know that that's not it's not a good argument uh and also why not I mean, you can't really put reason to it. Why wouldn't they start a religion for someone who didn't die? They just made people up and started religions. Some, or maybe, uh, you know, who knows? But why start a religion for someone who didn't die? And then rise is is what they're saying. And I just these, it's. You know, it's hard because I don't want to say anything too insulting about religion and, you know, I should I should be nicer about that or whatever, but, you know, it's kind of like uh, applying logic and reason, uh, reason to other religious elements, like uh, the Shroud of Turin that was apparently wrapped around Jesus' head or face area uh, when he died or was close to dying and I watched this little documentary people like were trying to uh, reconstruct what his face would have looked like and I think because it had sat on his face and then over time I don't know they could kind of see the minor indentations in the cloth that allowed it that kind of, you know, uh, that would have uh, allowed it with like three, I don't know, 3D imaging or measuring like the layers and, and whatnot. Yeah, they could uh, reconstruct a little face, and I think it was called the face of Jesus. I don't, I don't, I don't remember really, but it was uh, interesting. Uh, why apply reason and logic to it? You know, I don't know. It, I'm not doing very well, so. <sighs> we'll just move on from that uh, whole topic. And I'd mentioned um, Cheech and Chong. Chong's low point he'd said was when Cheech walked away and didn't want to do another movie with him and that's really interesting because that kind of happened before well that was back when they did movies together and then they stopped doing movies together for a while and I guess they're, they're back doing stuff together now but Tommy Chong had a career after 
you know, after Cheech and Chong. Uh, Cheech didn't, though, as much as, as, as far as I can recall. Like, I know Tommy Chong is in that 70s show, and I've seen him do cameos, I think, and other things, or maybe he had a role, I don't know. But he did do things, uh, after after that but I guess they probably made that movie a little later when his career was picking back up or maybe that helped it pick back up but I mean that dude is like 81 or something or 80 I want to get around like that when I'm 80 you know that's speaking of this health and fitness junk that's why I do that you know so hopefully when I'm like 80 I can move around like that and he's on all these podcasts and he seems to have his stuff together pretty well for for an older dude so hopefully I can be like that when I'm older although we don't really have my stuff together now so who knows but Yeah, it's interesting that he thought his low point was Cheech walking away. Because Cheech didn't get much work after that. I don't remember seeing him in much. Whereas Tommy Chong at least had jobs. Hi, welcome to The World Today with Brian Stiegel. I am Brian Stiegel. It is July 24th today. And uh, let me just go ahead and say, I had tried to do this yesterday, and uh, something just happened. I, I feel like my brain short-circuited or something, man. It was, you know, I don't know what it was. But I started this, I talked about some things, hadn't hit on some other topics, so today I'm going to go ahead and finish up, and uh, I'll leave what I talked about, sit, uh, you know, fuck it. And the more interesting stuff I've got, anyway, we got the peopling of the Americas, because I still have never talked about that with you guys. We have, I flipped the wrong page, let's see, we have Dreams and Lucid Dreaming, Rogan and his podcast, and just some thoughts I have about it, and I guess about podcasts in general, Eric Gardner, and, uh, the cop that murdered him, Game of Thrones, and uh, being jobless and transitioning in this part of my life. But, um, sorry, got a bit of a cold, so I might be a little sniffly. But, I'll go ahead and start off with, uh, with dreams here because I had had kind of heard uh, this um, phrase that made me kind of reconsider the way I thought about dreams and this is like as an abstract idea in general but dreams I had heard it said that dreams are the birthplace of thought which is really interesting and you know you think about why we dream and there are so many different theories on on why we even bother to dream and what what is happening exactly when we dream and you know I'm not sure we'll ever know but I do think that when you dream, your brain, well, you know, so I've heard that it kind of takes all the information you've you gathered throughout the day and uh, kind of organizes it in a way that makes sense to it. You know, your brain needs to comprehend all the information it's been exposed to, so dreams may uh, help with that. But... You know, I guess I don't know all that much about dreams uh, and how they happen physically. And it's 
it's weird that we seem to be conscious in we are conscious in dreams or else we wouldn't remember it our consciousness is present in dreams it's you know conscious uh although obviously we're sleeping and the body is you know your consciousness not in your waking body but it's in your in your dream mind so why and then why do we need I mean so, so it's you know it's impossible to answer all these why questions why you know I had a teacher that when we asked uh, why something was the way it was and maybe in like biology and human anatomy and stuff he would always say he would just answer with do you believe in God because you know we can go back and forth all day on why and what it comes down to is do you believe in a creator or do you believe in evolution because evolution is it's a mechanism that, that we don't know yet and I always thought I guess that was kind of it was a good way to kind of shut us up eventually about things that that we could you know had no place asking about that, that just you know you can't ask I couldn't even think of like a, a, a stupid question just you know why why are there males and females? Why is XX female and XY is male? You know. And you can you can go and talk about, you know, how all species more or less have two sexes and it seems to work for life, at least carbon based life forms on Earth that they tend to be more successful when you have a a male and a female of the species and then they can reproduce sexually and create offspring that are more genetically varied and can adapt to more environments and kind of do do what they need to do uh, the the light my camera just changed itself and so now I the whole screen changed it you know that was weird but uh yeah when it comes to dreams and being conscious in the dreams I've noticed see lucid dreaming is a thing and it's where you're con you're conscious you're experiencing it but you're also aware that you're in a dream I guess is is what happens and you're then able to control the dream in certain way, to some extent and and I I got pretty good at that uh because because nothing ever happened in my life in my real life life and I would I'd go to sleep and I would be somewhere around people maybe and I would think that's weird why am I around these people I haven't seen this person in eight years I haven't seen this person since high school why am I around these people where am I and then I would think oh this must be a dream because I don't hang out with people I, I'm never just gonna find myself around people you know like so it was, it was it was easy sometimes to recognize what's a dream and what's not and then there's you know dream logic that logic and, and it seems the rules of physics even are, are different in your dream and of course it's because it's like a simulated environment but here's the thing if you're consciously you're consciously experiencing a dream when when you do experience that when you're conscious when you can remember it and so you're consciously experiencing the dream I don't know uh, there's different 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 ways I guess to go about well so it's 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 this environment that you create completely in your mind then you just find yourself in it consciously and before you realize a dream 
or it, that it that it's a dream. You don't necessarily think is it real or is it not real. And to your consciousness, it doesn't really matter if it's real or not real because if you experience fear, let's say you're you'll experience it for real. You'll feel real fear in your brain and your heart. You might even feel your your heart racing. You might feel, you know, you might start sweating outside of your dream. You know, your body might start actually reacting to the fear that you're feeling. Uh, you can touch in dreams. You can feel to some extent. You can hear and see and smell. And so, if you can sense the dream environment in all these different ways, but it's not physically real, it just, to me, it seems like that shows it doesn't really matter if it's real or not. What matters is your conscious experience of it. And so, when you talk about us living inside of a simulation, I think the fact that you can, the fact that we dream is kind of uh, a hint that we could be in a simulation. Because it's like, hey, sometimes your consciousness is in this other plane, but everything that happens, your conscious, you still feel like it's real until you wake up and you're not in that dream plane anymore, or whatever you may call it. If we were in a simulation, and we're not going to be, you know, the simulation is going to fool us. We're not hopefully going to know that we're in a simulation. So, I don't know, I think it, uh, it gives some credence to the idea or some credibility to the idea that we could be living in a simulation. And I guess I don't know all that much about that even, really. Uh, but Elon Musk seems to think that we live in a simulation. And he's a super genius. And I've said before, I'd follow him if he was like a cult leader. I, I, I'd be like his first member. So... Because it seems to me like he knows something that the rest of us don't know. That we can't even, like, perceive. And so that's Elon. Elon Musk. Um, and yeah, so the lucid dreaming, I'd always notice. Hey, I'm... I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be around these people. Something's going on. Okay, what is it? Oh, I'm dreaming. I can remember going to sleep, actually. Okay, this is definitely a dream. Okay, and then I can kind of, you can't, and it is, you can't acknowledge in concrete terms that it is a dream. Because then I think you jar yourself out of it, and you, you wake up almost, or you stop dreaming. But if you can kind of keep it a secret, you you got to keep it a secret from yourself. So y your conscious mind has realized you're in a dream. You have to keep that fact a secret from your subconscious self. Because if your subconscious knows that you know it's a dream, it's gonna you're gonna wake up or, or the dream's gonna end or whatever. But if you can keep it secret from your subconscious mind, then you can influence the dream and control it a little bit. But you have to play by the dream's rules to some extent. Because that that specific dream is going to kind of have its own rules and laws and, and a set of physics almost. And you kind of, you know, like if you're just standing there and there's five people around you and you're at a campfire, you know, and maybe, and I, you know, I'm a, a degenerate, uh, maybe like a perverted man, I suppose. So in my dreams, whenever I realized it was in a dream, I was just like, hey, there's bitches around. Let's see what I can do in this dream. And so, you know, a couple times, maybe it ended in being successful. Other times, you know, it still it feels real, so it's still, like, fun. And then you wake up, I'm like, dang, man. I, I almost there, almost got it. 
But yeah, like you gotta you gotta play by the rules. So if you're sitting around, like there's four people around you, there's the five of you, you and four people sitting by a fire, and you decide that you know maybe you wanna maybe you wanna like be able to wield the fire. This is a terrible example. So, it, uh, say you decide you want to become a flame wielder. You want to, like, control the flames and shoot them from your hands and shit. Uh, maybe you can do that just by walking up to the fire and putting your hands in it. But when, when you think that, you, and again, you kind of got to trick your subconscious mind. And your subconscious, the, the center of the dreamscape, will show you, like, this is what you have to do. In order to do that, kind of, and you you can kind of carve a path. You can kind of see a way. Okay, I I can't just walk up to the fire and grab the flames, but she, you know, this person over here is telling the story about a superhero. If I can relate that, you know, to this, and then, you know, maybe I can say I'm a superhero. I'm coming out as a superhero, and maybe all this exists in this realm, and then, you know. Or maybe I want to become one, and they're going to teach me, and they have this little antidote thing that I can drink, and it's going to allow me to wield fire. But you see, you can't you can't just say, okay, now I wield fire, and, and reach into the fire. You're going to throw the dream off. It's too much of a disturbance. You're going to disrupt it. You're going to wake up, or the dream's going to end. If you kind of play by the rules of the dream, you can... You can, uh... Kind of guide it. You know, you can coerce it into becoming the the kind of dream that you want. And at least that's my experience with lucid dreaming. Um, but it's fun, you know. I, I've never... When people are like, oh yeah, once you realize you're in a dream, you can just do whatever you want. You can like start flying, or you can do this or that. I was like, well... You kind of can, but you got to play by the rules of the dream. You can't let your dream know that you know you're in a dream. So you got to hide that from your subconscious mind. You have to kind of play the rules of the dream, the physics, the laws, whatever is happening in the dream. You kind of have to play it and therefore play your subconscious mind so that the dream will turn out how you want and then, if you're just determined to have fun and you're kind of open, then the dream is going to be fun. You're going to have a good time. If you have one specific goal in mind, like I need to wield fire in this dream, maybe it's like maybe that's not what the dream is going to have planned for you. And ultimately, you do still follow kind of that that guideline of of what your dreams got for you, but. Maybe you want to wield fire, but the dreams go in, and you're working your way there, and then they say, "Oh, but then there you know maybe maybe the situation comes up, and it turns out that you're not the hero that wields flames, but you know you can breathe underwater and swim underwater, you know, I don't know, and then maybe that's where the dream is gonna go, but I don't know, that stuff is, uh, I don't know, interesting to me, I guess. Uh, have you ever lucid dreamed? Dreamed lucidly? I don't know, it's fun. And some people would say, like, uh, oh, a red ball. If, if I ever see a red ball, I know that I'm in a dream, and that's my thing. But, and why that doesn't work for me is I can't is that my dream would have to put the red ball in my dream before I saw it and noticed that it was a dream. It's easier for me to just, like, stop and kind of think rationally, like, wait a second, why am I at this camp, it, it, wherever this is? Or you're like, well, this looks like my grandma's living room, and that looks like my best friend's yard, and that's the deck from the house I grew up at. And you're like, well, why is all this shit right next to each other? Oh, yeah, because it's a dream. And this is the house that Dream built. You know, this is the house that Dream's built. 
which is kind of the opposite of the house that doubt built. Uh, because doubt is negative and will only bring things down, while dreams are positive and build things up. So, that's interesting. Sometimes I dream about things I don't... That Sometimes it throws me off what I dream about. Like, um... And it's only happened a few times. Well, I guess it's happened a, a decent handful of times. But sometimes I'll dream about doing drugs. And that's weird because, you know, I'm not doing them anymore. But even that, it's, it's been so long. And I don't dream about playing video games. You know, I don't dream about doing the podcast. I don't, I don't dream about work. You know, I don't dream about things like that. I guess I, I dream about things that make, that give me like a large emotional reaction maybe. So, sex, drugs, loneliness is like a common theme in my dreams, which makes them really sad. So that's also why sometimes I'll try to change it, because I don't want to be lonely around all these people. Shit, I'm around all these people anyway. Let's make something fun happen. See if we can't get something going. But, you know, I've, I've had dreams about drugs. And sometimes, you know, they're just pills. And, like, in my dream, I might have, like, nine Xanax bars. And in my dream, I'll be thinking, like, okay, I can have one now. I can have one in a few hours. I can have one tomorrow morning. I can have one tomorrow night. You know, I'm like planning it out. And I'm like, and then I got this later. I'll take it down. Just creating a schedule. And like, I parse out the drugs like for my dream week that is non-existent anyway. I don't know. It's, it's really interesting. And then the whole dream is like, I guess there's a lot of anxiety about it because like, you know, I'm afraid of losing them. They're expensive. I don't want to lose them. So I'm like, half the dream, I'm just like, making sure I still have them. And you don't even really remember anything else that goes on in those dreams. Except for my overwhelming concern that I have the drugs. That I can use them for many days on end. And that, and that I don't lose them. See, so yeah, that's really... Uh, Weird, but but interesting to me. And then there have been a couple times, only a couple, that I dreamed about having drugs that were like powder. And that was, you know, usually they're like pills or something. And sometimes there'll be like four different kinds in a thing. And I'm like, that's that, and that's this, and this is that. And I don't know what I'm going to, you know. Oh, weird dreams. And other times, I, you know... A lot of other dreams I would like to be sexual, but then they, they don't, uh, because that doesn't happen in my life either, so. Yeah, that's, that's my little thing on dreams. What are your dreams? What do you dream about? You know, maybe you dream about eating cacti in the Mojave Desert. You know, maybe you dream about whitewater rafting and, and, uh, Brazil or something. I don't know. They're your dreams, not mine. I can't tell you what happens. So, moving right along though, uh, we'll just hit on the next thing, uh, which is Rogan, Joe Rogan, his podcast, and just some notes that I have on it lately, although uh, he, you know, just things that I've noticed in my head and, and things that I notice about other people's podcasts. So I guess it's just about podcasts in general. But one thing that it seemed to me like he has been doing more recently is kind of talking to himself. Kind of just talking all the time in his podcast. And the guests are kind of more similar now. I mean, he's got a lot of comedians on, and, and, and they do this and that, or fighters, but, like, I feel it's getting more rare, or it seems to be more rare that he has on, like, 
a scientist or a political person. And then you can always see where the conversation is going to go. Like if he's got a political person on. You know, there's five things that I know he's going to talk about. And part of it is my fault because I watch him too much. Uh, but it's like, and I can kind of see where the conversation is going and predict it. And, you know, this person made a joke about this. Okay, now he's going to tell you about trans people and, and tr you know, men changing to women and then beating the shit out of real women. And it's, you know, I, I see where all that goes. Or like, oh, you mentioned a wolf. Okay, now he's going to go on about wolves for 20 minutes and how they're so badass and yada yada. Or, or, you know, oh, you mentioned, you know, what else? Uh, you mentioned comedy. Now he's going to talk about how he does comedy and how he writes his hour and, and how he comes up with material and doing stand-up and doing this. And it's like, I just see where it's going and I, you know, it, it, it's becoming a lot less fun to watch. And because, again, he's not having that much new people on. And the problem is, too, for me watching it at least, is that he's kind of controlling and guiding the conversation more so than he used to. It used to be kind of a conversation back and forth between two people. Now, it's more so kind of seemed like he was talking to fill the time. And he was talking so that someone could pull something out that he said and make a clip of him going off about aliens or him going off about, you know, coyotes and wolves or him going off about trans women fighting, you know, women. And, I don't know, just interesting. Seems like he, he repeats himself sometimes, too, a lot with all the stories. Again, though, if you have... Tens of thousands of hours, definitely thousands of hours of you talking, you're going to say the same shit a lot, most of the time. But, yeah, I just think the guests could be a little more varied or, or something. And I guess my complaint about somebody else's podcast is pointless, almost. Like, why am I expressing this here? I was not scratching my nuts if you were wondering it's not what I was doing um but yeah you know who knows he gets lectury too when he when he gets on one of those topics he'll start lecturing You're like well you know people think this and really it's this mm. so interesting um yeah, I kind of wish you'd let them talk more. Some of these guests that have come on uh, lately, I feel like I didn't get to know them at all. Or who the guests were. What the guests do. And kind of how they do it. Like, I, I just, I feel like, like he had Andy No or Go, or, you know, he had Andy No on, or Go. However you say his stupid fucking last name. How about he gets a last name that is pronounceable? So... Andy No, he had him on, and, you know, I gotta say, I still don't even really know what he does. At all. If I rack my mind, I might be able to, and maybe it's my fault. Maybe it's because it's a weekend. Maybe I'd had a drink or two, you know, maybe it was around, you know, maybe I was drunk when I was watching it, or maybe I was this or that, but you know, falling asleep and waking up, but I don't know, I just feel like, I feel like there hasn't been, there hasn't been much content, or like, uh, hard subject matter, good subject matter to kind of absorb from that, from his podcast lately, but, you know, I'm still going to watch everyone, so, at least for a while, but then, uh, you know, Jordan Belfort has uh, his podcast, The Wolf's Den. It's super cool. I've been really enjoying it. I really enjoy uh, watching and listening to incredibly intelligent people tell their story and, and share their wisdom and their experience on how they became successful and how they did what 
what they aimed to do and how they ended up, you know, sitting across from Jordan Belfort. Which I think would be really cool. One thing about him is that, and I love him, of course, I think he's super uh, intoxicating for the mind, almost. Like, it makes me feel intoxicated, almost, when I watch him. Just because he's got so much personality and energy, and, you know, he's from New York, so he's, he talks really fast, and... Uh, and sometimes, and I go, and, it, and on a search of one topic, and then, oh, back on there when we did that, oh, and then this, and you're like, bro, I can hardly, like, I can follow you, and I, I see what you're saying, and I can, I hear the beginning of your sentence, and then you switch, and so I know where you were going, and maybe why you switched, and but it's, I could see how it could be hard to follow, although I find it uh, not too bad, but interesting, so. And what do I want my podcast to be? You know, that's a good question. I think about that every day still, pretty much. Uh, my good buddy, Justin, had, you know, commented on a video and told me, you know, that he likes that I'm doing this. And that, and he's been telling me at work, like, oh, I really like this. I like that you're doing that. It's so cool. He's like, man, I wish we would have started it together. Because we had been talking about this, like, last August, September, October, towards the end of last year, uh, we'd been talking about maybe starting a podcast, and we even, you know, had a couple guests picked out who we might have on, just people we work with, but, um, you know, the ones we thought were fun, or that we could have fun with, and he's, I mean, he's an incredible dude, he's like, he's, he's incredibly hard working, you know, but that's not why I like him. I like him because he's, he's funny, and he's personable, and he really does care about about you, and he wants you to be happy, and he wants you to feel good and to have fun. And that's just always my vibe that I got from him, even if he, you know, even if, like, he, he picks on me, and, and maybe I'm, I'm the, the brunt of the joke, uh, you know, but is he, if he's making other people laugh and be entertained, then still, right, you know, can't can't really be mad at him. Although sometimes I admit I do get mad, but you know I get mad at everybody, and I'm an asshole and a shitty person. So, but like you know, when he's rushing me about fronts, and sometimes I'm like, God damn, you know, in my head I'm like, God damn it, and you just don't sit here and tell me about fronts. I'm working as hard as I can, as fast as I can. If you guys help me more, I wouldn't be so behind. And yada yada yada. Like I can only go as fast as I can go. If you want me to have good quality, not leave rolling out, yeah, blah blah blah. You know. Then again, I see it's making other people laugh. It's like, well, it's not that bad. And we used to do it to other people too. So I guess you know, not not. I don't know, just messing around, but he's so fun, and, and what I think he does well, and that I did well with him, was that he's really good at kind of setting a scene, and starting a bit, like starting a joke, and using an accent, or a place, or an event, to kind of start you off on your improvised creative thing you're doing together and so I mean we've had so much fun so many fun times just making stuff up and and saying it and talking like it I used to you know not like work and then well not not like it but you know I didn't love it and then uh, he I usually would work with him and a couple of our other buddies and we would just have so much fun working that like you know we'd be talking and laughing and joking around and we'd be working really hard and going really fast but everyone would help each other and we were all laughing together and so you wanted to go faster too and and I think he was an incredible motivator in that regard because he made people want to go faster not to like spite other people or hurt other people but to like help I don't know just so that you could be with the, your other co-workers. You could be part of the conversation, you know. Because our boss comes around and ah, respirators, ah, play respirators on, ah, stop talking. Uh, I could go on about this forever, but 
you know, two units will get done basically at the same time. So we're rolling one, right? And then two get done, we go get them, pull them over here. Now there's three sitting here. You know, we finish up on this one, but there's two more in front of it. Now the boss come over and look at me like, you're three behind, stop talking, Arr, get rolling. I'm like, no, all right, for sure, if we're not three behind, if anything, if there's this many, we're two behind because we're working on this one. But we're not two behind because they just got done. We can't roll them while they're being sprayed. Like, what the fuck? You this dude pisses me off so goddamn much. And I can go on about him forever and how much he pisses me off and how I wish, you know, bad things upon him maybe, but, you know, I'm just joking, I don't. But I just wish, you know, because he used to be nicer and he used to be, the boss used to almost be fun too, where, like, he might throw a joke out or he'd listen to us talking and kind of let us talk and have fun and as long as we were working and then he might throw in a joke or throw in a comment and that it was fun and it made me respect him more and you know now every time he comes by it's respirators stop talking you know and most of the time and here's the thing too most of the time we won't be talking and that's what'll make me so mad is that we won't be talking and he'll come over and be like oh you're three behind you guys shouldn't be talking that's why you're behind like dude we, no one said a word for two hours except down no one said a word for two hours, and you're telling me we're behind because we're talking. Again, for, we're not behind, because those who just got done, so we're where we should be, and we're not talking, so what you're saying is false. And he'll just do that. He'll just come up and say some shit that's, like, blatantly false, and it makes me so unbelievably, like, frustrated, and I just wish... I wish that he would be fair with us. And like today, the boss came by, or the big boss, and, and like I said, we'll be rolling one, and two get done. So it looks like we're, you know, three behind, but two behind working on this one. Anyway, so it'll look like that. So we're rolling one, and then two get done. And they brought out, so now there's the one we're working on, you know, and two right in front of it. Boop, boop. And one of the big, like, bosses come around, and he's, like, sitting there looking, like, with a bad look on his face, and he's, like, we should, oh, you know, don't run that next unit, because these ones are gonna get hard instead of blah, 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 we can't run another unit, we gotta get these ones walled. I was, like, do we are rolling them? And the thing is, too, because he stopped us, it's, like, yeah, the fronts and the back doors is gonna take a little longer, but I was on back doors, other dude was on fronts. We were doing fine today. We were doing well. You know, we didn't even need help today. And then, like, the side, one of them had a window. The other three didn't even have windows. Didn't even have windows. So it takes literally about 20 seconds to roll those sides. So within two minutes, those other three units could have all their sides rolled. And you have someone helping on the front, someone helping on the back, which, you know, me and the other dude were also doing. Point is... The boss comes up and he's like, so he made us stop, or not run the last one that we had to run, which was the last unit of the day. We just need to run it, and then we can all roll, and we can finish up real quick and be done. No, he comes over, he has us stop, then he sits there and he's you know, looking up, he's like, meh, and then, you know, our boss comes and he's like, I don't know, behind because they're talking. And it's like, again, I don't even think we were talking at that point. Because if we were talking, I would not have been able to hear them, to overhear them, you know? And it was getting towards the end of the day, and we had four units left, you know? So if we're talking at the end of the day, and he'll say shit too, like, or he used to say, like, if, you, if you're if talking, or I don't know, let's see, what did he say? He said, if you can't talk and roll, then don't talk. You know, because we're rolling. That's our job. If you can't talk and work, then don't talk. I'm like, all right, fair, right? And I agree. If you're sitting there and, like, because you can do this while talking to somebody. Hey, hi, John. Yeah, it's 54 degrees out. It's Tuesday. Oh, you should have been to church. You sent it a pastor. Oh, he sucked Jimmy Boy's dick. I don't know what the fuck happened. But. It's it's just like uh dude just makes shit up. He just makes shit up. And so he's telling the freaking big boss, he's like Oh, I've been telling them all day to quit talking and it's, it's really driving me crazy, blah 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 
And I guess he asked, you know, and now he's just going to start writing us up for talking and without even saying anything. And it's just like, sometimes you need to take a respirator down and say something. Like, maybe you got a question. And instead of it sounding like, Hey, where did you get the knowledge of me? So did you roll the side of the next one? Did you next one in the room? Like, no one can understand what the fuck you're saying. Take your respirator down, say the thing. Hey, did you just, did this unit get out of the robot out of the table? Okay, valid question. Maybe there's long chop. Maybe we need to tell somebody that they need to change the blades or something. And it's like, sometimes you have to be able to communicate. And if you don't mind if we talk as long as we're working, then like, stick to that. Let us talk if we work. And even if you don't, don't come by and lie and say that we were talking when we weren't. Because that's what bothers me the most. So we tell the big boss, like, oh, they've been talking all day, and uh, they just won't listen. Like, no. And other people can attest to this, like, because people work with us for the first half of the day, and then other people work, work with us for the second half of the day. People working with us for the second half of the day were like, no, he didn't. He didn't, he didn't say that at all. He didn't tell us one time to stop talking. But, um, and it's like, you know, like today, he, he, yes, what he said, he said, I've been telling him all day to quit talking. He told us one time to quit talking. And that was before the first break, even. So it was within the first hour or two of work. Um, and here's the thing that makes me even more mad. Is that they're acting like we're behind. We hit our number for every single hour today. Like they have how much, you know, units we're supposed to produce in an hour. We hit it every single hour today. And he's still, oh, you guys are behind. Oh, quit talking. About. Like, dude, would you chill? We're fucking going faster than you guys want us to go. So chill out, dude. Just chill out. So... Yeah, that kind of drives me insane, but... Anyway, I don't even know how I got to all this. He might buy me, um... But he told me, you know, so my buddy, uh, Justin, he told me that he, he really loved the podcast, and then he started, like, quoting it. Or he'd either quote it, or he'd, like, take a premise from the podcast and, like, uh, say something about it. And that... I don't know, man. It made me feel so good and like appreciated and someone actually watched because he's the first person that's like like Glenn used to watch I know um but you know I don't have anyone who views the show regularly so for him to do that was just super super cool and I really appreciated it and and he's just keep telling me like oh you're doing really good and you know, he also went back, because he watched these ones, you know, like, the newer ones, and then he went back to check out the ones from the beginning. And he even addressed, um, some of the self-doubt and stuff that I have talked about before, and had talked about maybe in the first or second one, and, and the reason for doing it, and I can only get better, and yada yada, and he really made me feel like, that this is a good choice, and that I'm doing this, and working hard, and, and that it could go somewhere well, and, I don't know, he really made me feel good and happy, and, um, you know, I love him and appreciate him for that, so, you know, he'll probably hear this, and, you know, but, I can't even, uh, and I can never even tell him really how much it means to me that he is watching and that he likes it, and not only that he likes it, but that, like, he absorbed it enough to say at work, like, Oh, what about this? Oh, yeah, because he meant, like, being woke, for instance. He's like, oh, cause someone said woke, and then he just kind of laughed, and he's like, oh, you're woke, huh? And I was like, oh, and he kind of quoted something that I said, and I was like, oh, he watched that. That's so nice and sweet. And that is a clip I pulled out, but, you know, he he's mentioned other things, he brought up other things, and I don't know, it touches my heart that he likes it and that he's doing it and hopefully you know me and him can can do something together at least and i'm not sure if i'll ever have pod uh guests on here but i think eventually i'd like to so i can talk about what's going on in the world today with them because they might have a better idea of what's going on in the world today uh especially in different parts like maybe someone will know what's going on in you know, North America, and someone for, like, Australia, and then maybe even someone for, uh, 
Asia and stuff. You know, maybe we'll find people who know things about different parts of the world. And to explain what's going on today, sometimes you have to explain what's been going on in uh, the past years. So, super cool that he watched that. I, I appreciate it so, 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 so much. I can't even, you know, can't even express how much I appreciate that he's watching it and that he likes to do it. And we will hopefully do something together. When we do that, you guys will see it. And, you know, maybe I'll start a podcast with him. Maybe we can... You know, he had an idea for one, and I thought it was a pretty good idea, and he's a personality man, he's a character, and I think you guys, uh, anyone watching us would love him, and so, if he's got his stuff out there yet, check it out, if not, you know, I won't plug him, but, um, I will whenever he gets his stuff out, so, and yeah, then we can collaborate, and I'm thinking about collaborating with other people too, and how I can collaborate more to grow this more and quicker help other people grow theirs quicker and I've been having some ideas going on in my head about this I don't go ahead and talk about this now um, but and, and I gotta go soon because I got some uh, some shit to do now coming up soon but business okay entrepreneurship is about taking risks and it's high risk high reward and part of me thinks, and then there's all these risks that I'm, like, not okay with taking. Like, you know, asking a girl out or, you know, talking to a stranger in public or doing this or doing that. There's so many things I am uh, have a lot of problems with. And it's because of the risk. It's kind of, I guess, the fear of failure. And it's not even... Yeah, it's the fear of failure, but it's not really the fear of failure. I don't care if I fail. It's the fear of becoming depressed if I fail. It's like, well, what if I fail and I can't handle it and I get even more depressed and, and then I want to kill myself again? I don't want to make myself get to a point where I want to kill myself again, so I can't take that risk. And if I can't take that risk, nothing's going to get better, nothing's going to get worse. Everything's just going to stay the same, and that's no... So I don't know, I guess I gotta come to terms with the fact that there's always risk and I gotta just gotta do, you know, get up, get out, go get it. And that's you know, kinda my saying and I just gotta stick to it and actually do it. But yeah, I'm I'm uh sitting here let me make sure that you know Well I guess this person will let me know before I have to do anything. I won't get caught unknowingly but yeah it's not the risk and it's not the failure it's how I'm gonna feel if I fail what if I feel so bad I want to kill myself I don't want to feel like that anymore you know I don't want to put myself in a position where I'm more likely to feel like that but you know I, I also thought like it's it's not the risk because then I thought about risk it's not financial risk or any other kind of risk because I risked money, I guess, in some way, but also my life and, you know, my safety and my health and my freedom, everything to do certain things, allegedly, in my past, you know, for certain businesses that I may or may not have been involved in, you know, the buying and selling of things and, and, uh, you know, this alleged activity, just, I, I was never worried about that, really. I mean, there was a point where I eventually did get a little paranoid, uh, you know, probably because of all the drugs, and also because I was, you know, the, the things I were doing were getting worse in a way, like, and I was getting into some real serious, like, possible implications from whatever I may have been doing and you know so some there was a point where I would I could shut my eyes and I would see like red and blue like flashing and you know helicopter and a fucking jeep rolling up and you know kind of like oh, freaking out but you know, for the most part I didn't fear the risk I didn't 
I didn't care about the risk. I didn't care about the risk financially or legally. You know, I didn't care if if I lost my freedom. I didn't care if if I lost my money. And I'll still make a risk with money that doesn't make any sense. Like, I thought you were risk averse. Well, I guess I am. But not to those things. Only to things like how I feel and how I'm going to be perceived in society. Societally, I guess. But, you know, I find uh, all this pretty interesting. <sighs> but, yeah, so it's weird. I was afraid to... Uh, and I don't think, and it's because there's all this risk I'm going to have to take soon. Moving, looking to start a business, or starting my comedy career. All these different things that I could be doing. And and uh, the risk is scary, but then I think, I, I've been able to deal with risk. I can deal with risk, so I think uh, that's just what I'll do. I'll just deal with the risk and do how I need to do it. But, I hear dogs barking. I might have to go check what's up with that. But, uh, as of now, you know, I haven't got no text, so I'm just going to keep going. But, yeah, so, and another thing I, I want to hit on, like, my mother mentioned that, you know, because I mentioned to her today, like, oh, yeah, I think I might move in with Glenn, and we might get a place, and... I might move jobs, you know, she's like, oh, it's a little far to be driving to Maslin, and I'm like, well, yeah, I might find a new job, she's like, well, uh, you know, she just seems so hesitant to let me go out and do anything or whatever, and it's, for sure, I'm gonna do what I want, I do what I want, you know, it's, and it's, you know, she's worried about my sobriety, she's like, oh, if you go back to Kent, are you gonna end up, you know, doing all the stuff you used to do, and blah, 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 it's like, no, dude, for starters, it's not, access to it really because you can always access it in a way and it's like and I'm trying to keep my access low but even if it increases I can deal with that and have dealt with that and it's like you know I don't I'm sober because I choose to be sober you know yeah I'll smoke a little weed down with that but it's like I'm sober because I choose to be sober not because I'm here and there don't happen to be drugs around it's because I chose to stop doing that and stop living that kind of life. And I may, may need a little help, but once I choose it, man, I chose it, and I'm not going to go back and start doing all that shit again, you know? Anyway, so she's like, make sure you, you have a job before you quit this one. Don't quit your job, you know. Uh, you know, solid advice, but I don't think I want to do that. I think what I want to do is, I'd like to start my comedy career, you know, I'd like to be able to start doing open mics and just do them until I'm good enough and go on the road or something, or start opening for people. I don't know how it works, but I know enough and I know that I gotta start and I just gotta do it, and eventually, if all, if all these other fucking people can do it, all these idiots can do it, if all these fucking, you know, non-funny people can do it, I can certainly do it. Not that I'm better than anyone or anything, but I'm just as capable as them. So that's what I'm looking to, looking to do, where I'm looking to go, and yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and close this out soon. But I just wanted to, you know, talk about that because I, I don't, I don't mind having a lapse in a job, and I saved money so that I could, and you know, if I can go three months without having a job, and I can hit every single open mic every single day of the week, and I can, you know, maybe I can get a job for Uber or for any of these other services that um, that you drive for, and you kind of make your own hours, and you kind of do your own thing. I mean, if I can do that, and do all the open mics and build my career, that's what I'm going to do. And, sorry, I'm playing with this NHS pen from a long time ago, and I keep dropping it, but, you know... Uh, it's behavior. So, I I kind of want there to be a lapse. I have an idea for a business too, but I'm going to, or different ideas for different things, but I need to start it and just do it. And the problem with it really isn't the rejection, it's not this or that, it's that I don't really have the, 
At this point, I guess it's kind of, I don't have the time to spend on it, and I need to dedicate the time to spend on it, and I just need to do it because it's what I want to do. Why am I fucking around with this stupid-ass job making someone else rich anyway, when I could be starting my own business that, you know, makes me rich eventually, and, and again, I don't want to mooch, you know, I'm not going to not pay my bills, but, you know, I've saved money, if I want to go two or three months without having, like, a set scheduled job, I want to try to make money other ways, or start my own business through this or that, you know, that's what I'm going to do, you know, I don't care, really, um, it, and it's like, I'd, I'd rather be dead than not try, and I'd rather, you know, just k kill me now, if, I'm, I'm just gonna work a shit job the rest of my life, so, I think, uh, this may be a decent place to end it, but, yeah, just looking for, t towards the future, uh, see what's gonna come up, see what's gonna happen, and, uh, I will tell you, though, that, yeah, that, that thing the other day was just weird, I, yesterday, I couldn't, so much doubt was going through my mind, should I do this, should I do that, but doubt, 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 um, so I ended up doing, was pausing it, and, um, I think what I'm going to do is add those videos from yesterday to the end of this video, or maybe before it, and I'll cut out, like, an intro part so I can actually tell you what's happening and why it's cutting and why it's so jumpy and doesn't make sense, but I think I'm going to include it, um, because I did have some valid content, you know, where I talked about this or that or whatever, but also I just think it's important for me at least to keep it and to see it to see like the doubt in when it sets in and the way the brain works and then usually I can just overcome it but that time there were I just wasn't able to overcome it and so and so I'd stop doing the you know I, I just shut it off yesterday and said I'll, I'll do this tomorrow I'll do this another day when I I thought maybe I could even do it later in that day but no I needed sleep. I think I needed a good hard reset. Because that was, uh, it was weird. But, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put those clips at the beginning of this or the end of this, and we'll, uh, go ahead and do all that. But I am going to go blow my nose, because it is stuffed to the gills. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, and I'll, as I'm editing these together, listen to it again. And then if there's anything I missed, should I want to talk about better or more clearly that I hit on uh, yesterday, I will do so. But uh, as for now, thank you guys for watching. And uh, one of the videos, you know, the one from two weeks ago, episode 22, has gotten into those top fives. And, you know, I'd said... Uh, in my little thing yesterday that if one person watched the video fully that it would go into any of my episodes of this fully it would be in my top five videos for the last month so one of my videos that popped up there for this podcast because um, the other ones are the insert name here podcast I did with Glenn so it was pretty cool that, that one of these came up and it you know validated somebody watched and again I think it was my awesome buddy but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, thanks for commenting, liking. Thanks for subscribing because that's like the biggest thing. Um, you know, tell people about it if you are so inclined. But, you know, that call to action may come later because I don't think I'm not going to have too many people telling people about it. But we'll keep going and we'll grow and we'll get there. And I'm going to, uh, we're going to build this shit up. I'm going to move, I'm going to get another job, I'm going to make my own job, I'm going to start my own business, and shit's just going to get good, so, and it, it is just starting to get good, so, you guys watch out, hopefully uh, I can have another camera, I can do this or that, improve this podcast, and I talked about that yesterday, so, yeah, thank you guys for checking it out, I have to eat, go to bed, blow my nose, use the bathroom, um, do all these things, but, thank you. You know, remember, guys, if you're thinking about, maybe I should do this, maybe I shouldn't do this, uh, bitch, 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 wine, 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 okay, look, you need to have zero 
excuses. Zero excuses, because we're going to give no fucks about your excuses. Who are you to be making excuses for the world? You ain't nobody. So, now that that's out of the way, thanks for watching, guys. You're all my friends, and uh, I'll catch you next time on The World Today with Brian Stiegel. Sign off, face.